And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Honey! Yes? Why did I just open up my wife's Spotify? Hold on. I'm lost. Where am I? Oh, man. Hello? Are you there? I'm here. Okay. I'm not. Where? <laughs> what? What happened? I somehow went. Out of my settings and into Natasha's settings? Where where am I? Login free credit score? I have no idea where I am. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Funny! Yes? <laughs> if you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who isn't? It, it's sweeping the nation. It's Swiffer wet jetting the nation. Um, but only the real followers, the, the real fans, the true hardcore fans who have been with us since the beginning, uh, only they would know the, the two main facts about the both of us. Two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest will they or won't they couple, Bunny and Maylin. First and foremost, Bunny is the fact that when you're not recording this podcast, you actually host a very successful true crime podcast. Every third person in the world currently hosts a true crime podcast. So, Bunny, talk to us a little bit about your other podcast. What is your show called, and what kind of crimes do you cover? Uh... It, 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 it's a weekly broadcast. I do it by myself. I do all my research. Uh, and it is true crime, and I investigate anybody who tears the tag off a mattress. Yes. Yes. About time. About time someone covered the crimes that count. Nobody you know? takes that seriously. Tags yeah, off of mattresses, does. tags off of pillows. Yeah. People do it all the time. And do not care who they hurt. And yeah. yes, like Jeannie said, get away with it every single fucking day. It's sad. And I am it's sick sad. of it. I am sick, sick to death of it. Yeah. Well, um, uh, to be honest, I haven't listened to it yet, but uh, I'm going to be listening to it, Bunny. I'm going to be listening to it soon. Okay. Okay. Please, please trust me on that. Um, and the second fact that that is about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So what I like doing at this part of the podcast is I like getting a bit of history, something from the history books, maybe something that you don't know too well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling style. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of Historic approximations, or as we like to call it, and that's capital H, capital A, small p. That's small p. P is very vital to the podcast. P fuels the entire show. America runs on Duncan, and the Pope on Film podcast runs on P. Boom, new tagline. Taking yes. it. And again, to be clear, originally this segment for a long time was called Steve's Historic Approximations, or SHAP, as we like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wanted us to or not. However, a dead name is a dead name for a reason, and so we are moving on. So, what is happening with HAP this week? Well, my friends, today is a special one. I don't know where this idea came from, but here we go. For every three celebrities who are canceled, who are canceled... Oh, you libs and your cancel culture. Uh, oh, wokeism. Uh, the far right has dubbed it wokeism because calling it normal common decency would make them to be the bad guys. Yeah. A lot of uh, far right people are like, oh, America's so woke and the liberals and the progressives and the SJWs. Oh, they're the real fascists. Like, uh, if there's one thing that fascists love, it's talking about how the people who fight fascism and just want people to be treated equally, they're the real Hitlers. 
So for every three celebrities who are canceled, there's usually one celebrity whose cancellation, eh, it just doesn't take for whatever reason, you know? And so what we'll be doing on this historic approximations is we are here to remind people there are some stars who evaded cancellation for whatever reason, and we are here to remind you, hey, these people, they're still trash. So I've got a list. Why we're going to discuss them, okay? Are you ready? Okay, but one important person who has been canceled and were canceled to the day they died just because they put nipples on Batman... Joel Schumacher. It's so funny because they did like like the Dark Knight. And it's like, oh, you know, uh Batman needs to be gritty. Batman needs to be dark. Batman needs to be foreboding. And then they did like a Batman v Superman. Oh, maybe we need to make Batman slightly grittier. And make the film darker. Make everything happen in the rain. Our Batman needs to be dark and gritty. And then they're like, no, it needs to be grittier. Get the sparkly vampire from the teen movies. Make him Batman. Make the, the Riddler a freaking serial killer. It needs to be grittier. But in the 90s, they just went nipples. Yeah. Nipples. Give him nipples. Nipples in a big cod piece. That's our Batman. Uh-huh. Give him a give him a, a an American Express card. Yes. Harvey! I'm Batman. So, um yeah, Joel Sh Joel Schumacher, that's his name? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Uh, I appreciate a hero. He's a hero. I That's the word you're looking for. Hero. I appreciate what he was trying to do because uh, uh, Tim Burton really wasn't a fan of comic books, so he said, I'm going to make Batman into a Tim Burton-y film, and ooh, here are the circus gang, and ooh, top hats, and they've got exploding juggling balls, and Woohoo! Everything's silly and dark and foreboding. And then they took it away from Tim Burton and said, Joel Schumacher, you have Batman. What are you going to do with it? And he said, I don't know Batman. I never read the comic books. I don't know anything about it. I did see a lot of Adam West. We're making Batman as silly as freaking possible. And like, I, I, I get that, you know? And I think that's kind of cute and kind of sweet. And I love Jim Carrey as the Riddler. He's my Riddler. <laughs> my my high schooler, his Riddler is Paul Dano. Fine. My Riddler is hilarious, though. My Riddler is super funny. Yeah. I still think that my preferred method of suicide is telling Tommy Lee Jones that he overacted in Batman. Yes. That would be my preferred method of suicide. Either that, or what was that movie, Secret Agent 69? What was that, Secret Agent? Cody with, Banks? With the woman, and she... Oh! Yeah. yeah. Chesty Morgan. Chesty Morgan, yeah. So those are my two methods of, of suicide. Being Chesty Morgan, or uh, telling Tommy Lee Jones he overacted with Jim Carrey. So... I've got a list of celebrities who haven't been canceled, but you should still uh, consider staying away from them. Of course, number one on the list is uh, uh, Just Kidding Rowling. JK. Yes. Rowling. I read somewhere online, I don't remember where I read this, but um, whoever wrote this, oh, mwah, chef's kiss. Italian chef's kiss. I read somewhere that someone said that before... J.K. Rowling became successful. Her persona was built entirely on the idea of before they made movies, before she became a blockbuster uh, bestseller, before she became super rich, um, her publishers, her manager, they, they built her name on being a poor single mother, 
a single parent with no, without a yeah. dime to her name. An underdog fighting against the rich 1%, writing this, this a uh, wizarding book for children, hoping that one day it could be a success. That was J.K. Rowling, a, a, a proud feminist fighting against the system. She was poor, and she did what she had to and buy her book because she is a hero. But what happens when that underdog becomes literally the rich 1%? Yeah. What happens when that uh, poor single mother becomes literally a billionaire well what happens is she still needs to find a way to make herself out to be the victim in fighting a group so she just picked uh, uh the group that is the smallest and rarest and and usually doesn't fight back yeah. so now here she is just literally out here making trans people's lives dangerous yeah she is a hateful bigot who can't take criticism. It's disgusting how many fans she still has. I get it, people. Uh, the wizard books were popular when you were growing up. Oh, you you aged along with the Harry Potter movies. And by the time they got to the last one, oh, the kids were older and so were you. And the films matured with you. I get it. I get it. But now the author is a rich billionaire who literally wants me dead and my children taken away from me. I'm sorry. Read Terry Pratchett instead. Yeah. He actually is. His his <clears throat> wizard books are funny and well written and they're for adults and they don't have really uh, anti-Semitic caricatures in them i read i read also somewhere online that there was some uh online game where oh you you go into these mines and you're killing all of these trolls but terry pratchett specifically went out and created a mod for this game where you don't have to kill the trolls and you can study them and it's like that alone good for you terry pratchett he's a british yeah. author he has written a bajillion books in the Discworld series. You don't even have to read them in order. Just pick one. My favorite is uh, uh, Mort, uh, Soul Music, The Hogfather, Moving Pictures, the first one, The Color, The Color of Magic, The Amazing Maurice and His Educated Rodents, uh, the, all the Night Watch books. I've started getting into the uh, the Granny Og, the the witches books. Um, they're all really good. Some of them have been made into movies that you can find online or even on YouTube. Some of them have been made into animated miniseries. His books are amazing. Read those instead of J.K. Rowling. Yeah. She sucks. Just period. She wants me to die. Yeah. And so maybe don't... I'm sorry. I know you just want to throw all of your money at a wizard series from when you were kids, but she wants me to die. Yeah. So how about you don't give her any money anymore? Okay? Please? My favorite part is when she met Graining herself. She finished writing the wizard books and she said, I can do it again. I had one big hit. I can write. I can have another big hit. So she started writing mystery books under a pen name. Oh, yeah. I am such a good writer that people are going to love these mystery books, even though they're not. I even though I haven't uh, put my name on them. I uh, let me get a fake name, Robert Galbraith. Sure, whatever. People are going to love these Robert Galbraith books, and Robert Galbraith is going to be such a massive hit uh, author. And then I'll come out and say, ha ha, surprise, it's me, J.K. Rowling. People are going to love these books. And what? No one's buying them? Okay. Um. Hey, everybody. J.K. Rowling wrote them. What? I can't believe that got leaked. That, that's my favorite part, when she leaked the fact that she was writing these books under a pseudonym. Because yeah. no one was buying them, because no one cared. In her last mystery book, it's all about this uh, trans killer who's preying on women. And yeah, 
she's garbage. Please stay away from J.K. Rowling. There you go. Yeah. Please stay away from her. She she wants to kill me. Speaking of, our next person on the list, sadly, is John Cleese. Wait, we're doing a list? This is a hap. I have a list of people and the historic things that they did. Okay. That caused them to be garbage. Yes. Like, like the last one on the list is Sean Penn. I think a lot but of ne- people don't know the history of Sean Penn. But neither of these people are canceled. No, but they should be. Okay. It is shocking that J.K. Rowling is still making billions of dollars every year when she wants me to die. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, this is a, a historic approximations where we talk about the history of these celebrities who were not canceled and why they should be. John Cleese. Monty Python alum John Cleese. We get it. You liked Monty Python back in the day, probably when you were growing up because you were a weirdo. I was too. But maybe go back and rewatch the Monty Python shows. Pay good attention to uh, the black face, the red face, the yellow face, the racism. Uh, listen to the Monty Python song, Never Be Rude to an Arab. <laughs> and the part with the N-word, where they just straight up use the N-word. Hey, Monty Python, maybe don't use the N-word. And, uh, oh, what about uh, um, Raymond Luxury Yatched? It's spelt Raymond Luxury Yatched, but it's pronounced Throat Wobbler Mangrove. And he's wearing a big fake styrofoam nose. And the interviewer says, you're a very silly man, and I don't want to interview you. And uh, Throat Wobbler Mangrove says, ah, anti-Semitism. Get it? Because he has a huge hook nose. Yeah. There are some problems with Monty, with 1960s Monty Python. And then, when you're done with all the Monty Python, go back and watch John Cleese's Faulty Towers. I love British shows because it's like, oh, this show is one of the greatest sitcoms of British history. It lasted for 10 years, two seasons, six episodes. You know, British yeah. shows do that. So, like, Faulty Towers, I think, was on for two seasons, and I think there was 10, maybe 20 episodes, and that's it. Is that it? It's something... I I don't think there are more than 20 episodes. I am pretty certain about that. But a lot of British shows are like that. One of my favorite shows is... I never, no I never liked it, so I've only seen, like, an episode here or there, and I, 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 I know enough to know... That Manuel is the butt of all the jokes. Yes, yes. It, it, Faulty Towers, the entirety of, the, of, of most of the episodes, the humor just comes from the fact that huh, Manuel doesn't speak English. Can you imagine these stupid foreigners? So it should be no surprise that John Cleese is now defending J.K. Rowling and fighting back against cancel culture because, oh, comedians just can't make jokes anymore. It, but I understand J- I understand John Cleese because if I had that no, much racist you can you can and- make jokes. I am not obligated to find your jokes fucking funny. Yeah. Why am yeah. I obligated to find your goddamn joke funny? Yeah. Comedians can't make jokes anymore. Yeah, John Cleese. If I had that much blackface in my past, I might be against cancel culture as well. But he's now working on a new cancel culture comedy talk show with a British conservative named Andrew Doyle, and it will air on the far right wing British news outlet GB News. So, yeah, John Cleese over the past couple of years has slowly but surely done a full Joe Rogan. Yeah. yeah. And, uh,. But he's still out there making movies, being interviewed, you know, being on talk shows. And also in 2009, he went on this rant complaining about how there are so many foreigners in England that it's ruining it. Oh, I don't recognize England anymore because of all the foreigners. It's like, okay, John Cleese, I get it. You were young and rebellious and a member of the cancel culture. But now you're like in your 60s and 70s and 80s and you're against foreigners. I get it. 
Yeah. I get it. I feel like the same thing is happening right now with Saturday Night Live. But that's beside the point. Number three, Roger Waters. Roger Waters. Always controversial Roger Waters. What did he do this time? The conceited man who took Pink Floyd over from the brilliant mind of Sid Barrett. I have really gotten into Sid Barrett's music lately. I love Gigolo Aunt. Okay, so um, he's a Putin-loving anti-Semite and a racist. Here's here's also a good way to describe Roger Waters. Uh, a line from Ed Wood. What does ostentatious mean? Uh, I, I, I applaud Roger Waters for being a trans ally, but it's always strange to me when people are selectively bigoted. But, it, but as far as him being anti-Semitic or not, that's something we're going to have to take a closer look at. Because you know here in America that if you take an anti-Israel stance, that's considered anti-Semitism, and yeah. it's fucking not. Yeah. It's just, it's just weird. It's, it's weird that there's, like, selective anger and selective hatred and selective bigotry that's out there. And, that, and some people are like, oh, Black Lives Matter. Hate gays, though. That would, that's always yeah. weird to me, you know? Yeah. That's always odd. Like a lot of people who attack me online for being trans um have I stand with Ukraine on their bios. Yeah. And I always think that that's odd and it's like, "Oh, you believe that black lives matter and you stand with Ukraine and also you want me to die." Interesting. Okay. DJ non sequitur over here. No thank you. His bigotry has ruined the album The Wall for me now, now that I know that he's like a Putin-loving, anti-Semitic, and a racist, and conceited, and all of these things. Now, I, for the longest time, The Wall was the album that I went to when I was super depressed. And, and, and I was like, I wanted to wall myself up from the outside world. I would listen to The Wall. But now, I listen to it, and it just sounds like a guy who needs therapy complaining about how difficult it is to be a rock star. <laughs> It's like, man, oh, this sucks. And I want to take this time to say that this has nothing to do with my older brother. Okay. I have an older brother named Joe. He is a super huge Roger Waters fan. I'm not hooping on Roger Waters just because my brother is a fan. My brother and I had a sibling rivalry growing up, and it, it continued until we got older, and then eventually I moved on, but my brother is still out there trying to be better than me. When I'm just out here trying to live my best life as my authentic self. Like, I worked on a rubber band ball for a long time, and I was really proud of it. And then suddenly, my brother is on social media. Look, I made, I'm, this is my rubber band ball. I've been working on it for the last three months, and my goal is to make it bigger than my uh, sibling's rubber band ball. And it's like, why are you coming after me? Like, I remember... Uh, uh, last year talking about the race that I was going to do and how nervous I am and my brother got on my social media. Don't worry about it. I did a race that was exactly that length earlier and I, uh, I did it in this time, which is better than yours and I am a smoker and I have bad knees so I wouldn't worry about it. And it's like, okay. It sounds like you're just going out of your way to make sure that I know that you did better than me in this race and it's the sibling. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow my brother came out and said, after much soul searching, I have come to the realization that I am double trans, which <laughs> is twice as many trans as uh, my sibling. Oh, that's he would he would probably call me Steve, to be honest. That's, but that's that's good. Well, first off, I have been waiting for something like that from Joe. I have. Yeah. Yeah, and I've said it before. I pr I'm pretty sure. I think I'm on record for that. But yeah. I'm 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 curious about this double trans idea that you had. Yeah, I mean, because it kind of implies to me that he has transitioned and then transitioned back again. I mean, yeah, how I else figured that he would come trans? out and say that he was double trans. That he identifies as a trans woman who identifies as a trans man. Get yes. it? It's a joke. Now I don't have to change who I am. Yes, it, it, it like has a, my brother joke. It has a quality similar to the fastest gunfighter. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I remember, I remember one of the last times that we hung out and uh, my brother's like, hey, I figured out what's wrong with me. I have OCD. And it's like, okay, but um, I don't think you do. I think you're bipolar because I'm bipolar. And bipolar is like a genetic thing. And our father was certainly, most certainly bipolar. So I think you're bipolar too. No, I have OCD. I have a thing with numbers. And then like six months later, he comes out on social media. I have an announcement to make. I now realize that I suffer from bipolar disorder. And it's like, okay, yeah, I thought it was odd that I had this one thing to myself. So it's not surprising that my older brother has come to take it. So. Okay. But I'm just trying to live my life. You know? Just trying to yeah. live my life. But Roger Water sucks. It has nothing to do with my brother. Sharon Osborne. Sharon Osborne. She has been accused by a number of former colleagues and co-workers of numerous racist and homophobic slurs. And I love the idea that Ozzy's wife is the controversial one. Yes. And Ozzy's just at home with a cup of tea, you know, and a crumpet reading the paper. <laughs> and Sharon comes into the house and Ozzy goes, oh, what happened to you today, love? I got fired again. Oh, I told you. it's it, You're so controversial. Why don't you just sit down and eat a bat and relax? I love that. I love that idea. That, like, Ozzy Osbourne, you'll hear his music playing in in freaking Macy's. Yeah. But Sharon is the controversial one. Wonderful. I was at the mall, because there's a mall in my town. That's how, that's how backwards Oklahoma is. We still have successful malls. I was at the mall, and on the radio, they were playing... I want to be sedated by the Ramones. Yeah. And I just thought, if Joey Ramone were alive, he would kill himself. Seeing teeny boppers outside of the shoe store, eating a hot dog on a stick and listening to the Ramones while wondering if they should go to Hot Topic or not. And now Ozzy, has, Ozzy Osbourne's just fine. He's, he's no longer controversial. It's his wife that's the problem. I love that. I love that. Cancel Sharon. We have, we have two malls. I don't know if they're successful. I'm not quite sure where they are. I know where one of them is. Not so sure about the other one. Uh, I have been here since 1997. I've been in one of them maybe twice. I used to go to the movies a lot, but then the movie theater in the mall closed down, and I'm still really upset about that, but... Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, you notice how the first four people on my list of people, of famous people who, uh, who avoided being canceled, but should probably definitely be canceled? Notice how the first four are all British! Yes! I know, Bunny, that you worry about me. I am a trans woman and i live in the midwest in the bible belt in the small racist town i understand that you're worried about me but as dangerous as my daily life is it is three times as worse in england right now is it it is bad for trans people and for gay people it's even worse and whenever someone attacks me online someone attacks me on twitter someone's giving me death threats on instagram yeah okay 75 percent chance uh you waited in line for 17 days to see a queen's corpse. Yeah. So make of that what you will. Ben well, freaking but it's, Stein. But it's but it's because the the people who are in power do not are afraid of their own masculinity. Yeah. White men rule this world. White men are terrified, 10-minute warning, that okay. maybe they're not as manly as they think they are. Yeah. So, you know, okay. Because, as always, you know, back in my day, 
it was a more homosexual argument, and lesbians, not so much heat. They would get heat, but not so much. Trans men, not so much heat as trans women. Elliot Page, certainly, you know. I had a but, wonderful but conversation he's more with of an my outliner. Yeah, I had a wonderful conversation with my eleven-year-old uh, yesterday, or was it this morning? I told him I was jealous of his childhood because when I was young, you were straight or you were gay. There was also bi, which was equally as shameful, and that was it. Yeah, it, there were trans people, but but they weren't as recognized in a as accepted, so they hid and and. It, they struggled, but my son is growing up in, in a slowly but surely more liberal world where he can be a, a, a trans woman. He can be non-binary. He can be uh, asexual, non-romantic, aromantic, gender fluid. He has so many options of who he can be, and I'm jealous of that. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Okay, yeah. I have five. I have five more celebrities left, so I'm gonna rip through it because we have eight minutes left. Ben Stein. Yes. Before becoming the droll teacher from Ferris Bueller, before he started in his own Comedy Central game show, which I remember loving. Yeah. He was Nixon's speechwriter, which already that's a big red flag. But he left politics and became a successful actor and TV personality. But recently, his droll shtick wasn't enough to keep him rolling in cash. So he has gone full right wing. He called Obama more racist than all the <clears throat> other previous presidents, including the ones who owed people. Yes. He has said some really racist. He had some really racist stuff to say about Michael Brown's death at the hands of cops. And he recently posted a video where he lamented syrup, how he missed having a large African-American woman on his syrup container. But thanks to the woke liberal mob. Like, OK, Ben Stein, you can shut up. Yeah, you can shut right up. Um, uh. Because you were popular, now you're not popular anymore, and you've gone full right wing. Speaking of, here's a late edition, Dilbert. Dilbert, oh god, cartoonist oh, Scott no, he's, Adams he's blocked Scott me Adams long has been ago. Real forever. Yeah, uh, uh, Scott Adams, the cartoonist who created Dilbert, he blocked me forever ago on Twitter. I think because he, um, he's. He's one of those celebrities where it's like, I'm super successful. Oh, wait, I'm less successful. Oh, wait, my wife left me. Well, guess I'm becoming a right winger. And so <laughs> he went far right. And during the pandemic, he was like an anti-masker, anti-vaxxer. COVID is fake, like like nonsense, conspiracy theory, QAnon, pro-Trump nonsense. And I started making fun of him. So he blocked me on Twitter. Um. A few days ago, he he went on a rant where he urged white people to avoid living near blacks because all black people are a hate group. Okay. The guy who made freaking Dilbert. And now his strip is being dropped uh, left and right by major newspapers and, and stuff oh, like good. that. This isn't surprising. Who can, if there's one thing people think about, they think about the bad boys of rock and roll and the bad boys of comic strips. Uh, who can, who can forget when, um, uh, the creator of Hagar the Horrible destroyed his hotel room? Yeah. Jim Davis, the creator of Garfield, he actually did. Uh, something with a uh, group, an underage groupie, and two sharks, which was worse than what Led Zeppelin did. Yes, the bad boys of cartooning, you know. <laughs> so everyone knows how crazy those cartoonists can be. Yeah, Matt Damon. There's a lot to unpack Matt here. Matt Damon, okay. From the horrible. Uh, 
he had some horrible things to say in 2018 during the Me Too movement. And, like, the Me Too movement was happening, and he came out and he said, like, hey, uh, yeah, there are some bad people in Hollywood, and they're, like, rapists, and they're uh, perverts. But I don't think that us men should be lumped in with those people just because we smack a woman on the butt or think they're pretty. And it's like, okay, Matt Damon, you need to shut your mouth right now. Yeah. Because you're coming dangerously close to a line. Uh, <laughs> then he, he also starred in the 2016 film The Great Wall, which is real whitewashing at its finest. It's a Chinese film about, the, about how Matt Damon is a white man who built The Great Wall of China. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, the final one, this one pisses me off so much. In an interview, he said that his daughter sat him down and talked to him and schooled him on how the F slur is actually offensive. And now he doesn't use the F slur anymore. But he didn't do that interview in 1997 no. or 2002 or 2015. That interview was from 2021. Yeah. You stop calling people an F in 2021? An F A asterisk? An F asterisk G? You stop calling people that in 2021? Damn, bro! Bad Matt Damon! <laughs> Shazam! His name is Zachary Levi. I'm just calling him Shazam. In the beginning of 2023, amidst the promotion of Shazam 2, the film star Zachary Levi tweeted some anti-vax stuff. And man, I was excited for Shazam 2. Uh, but nope, not going to watch it now. Thanks, Chuck. He said, now he Shazam, said what? Now Shazam guy joins so many other celebrities who have refused the COVID vaccine. Big time celebrities, too. Chet Hanks? What? Yeah. Rob Schneider? Man, will his star ever stop rising? Evangeline Lilly, which pisses me off because I just saw Ant-Man. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, the two biggest names in the celebrity anti-vax movement, Christy Alley and Olivia Newton-John. Those two are surprising because they're both the pinnacle of health. <laughs> I do not feel ashamed for that joke. At all. <laughs> Period. I feel no shame for that joke. And finally, Sean Penn. Nowadays, when you see Sean Penn, he's righteously out there in ground zero helping marginalized groups, poor people, minorities, homeless people. It's not surprising to see him at ground zero of whatever the latest American tragedy is. And he's there on the ground floor helping people out. I vividly remember a picture of him in Rolling Stone magazine in a small canoe during Hurricane Katrina yeah. helping people. And he had like a red solo cup, which he was using to get water out of his boat. And I just remembered that vividly in my head that Matt Sean Penn and his red solo cup are here to <laughs> save the day. He's dedicated his life to helping people. And there's a reason why. I'd like to preface this by saying that Sean Penn and Madonna have recanted their stories and now and, and they now deny that all of this happened. But um, uh, just go ahead and Google or Bing or ask Jeeves or Alta Vista uh, Sean Penn, Madonna, baseball bat. And you can read that for yourself. Yeah. And read about the police who were there and saw Madonna's bloody face and, and saw how beaten up she was. And you can also take some time to go on uh, Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit and learn about the numerous other times that Sean Penn has assaulted people. He has assaulted a lot of people. And, you know, they recanted the story about what happened with Madonna. But, hey, maybe we shouldn't uh, let Sean Penn be in oh, front he of was anymore. He was famous for beating up photographers. I mean, he was that he was, was a but major nowadays you don't hear anything at the about fucking that. time. Yeah. So that's it for sh for Hap this week. Historic approximations. I remember, these I remember, celebrities. Go ahead, go ahead. If you want to wrap it up. Yeah, these celebrities close. stay away from them. 